Hello there. In this video I'll be showing you how to choose cars in the GT Open Class Series of the Project Cars 3 Career Mode. There are 16 cars in the GT Open Showroom, and 62 more from the previous class. That's 78 cars in total. I tested all 78 cars in both pace setters of the GT Open Major Series to find out how they'd perform. The American Smooth Pace Setter at Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course is a real-world track, laser-scanned accurate digital model built by SMS. The road course layout consists of 11 corners or chicanes and two straightaways. Cars with good acceleration and decent grip would be better choices. The longest straight of this course is about 1 km in length. Cars require certain top speed to reach the highest objective here. The Fuji Speedway is also a laser-scanned real-world track. It is in the foothill of Mountain Fuji, has many elevation changes along the curving part of the circuit. Cars need excellent aerodynamics to go through the tight corners fast enough to reach the high goal. This circuit also has one of the longest straights in motorsport tracks, about 1.5 km at length. Cars with higher top speed usually are better choices. The highest objectives of these two pace setters are surprisingly easy. There are 74 cars beat the high goal at American Smooth, and 53 of them did it at Fuji Speedway as well. For there is no PIR limit for GT Open Class, every car gets to upgrade to the top. Most of the cars are modified with 300 HP Hybrid Boost, which is a KERS that recovers the kinetic energy under braking. There are six high-end cars in the GT Open showroom which don't have the boost option to upgrade. These cars have automatic KERS built-in, and you don't need to push the boost button while driving. Other cars require driver input to operate the boost, the timing when to use it is essential. The best location to deploy the boost is at the exit of a low-speed corner following with a long straight. It's obviously beneficial to engage the full charge when exiting the last turn at Fuji Speedway, but not so simple at Indianapolis. The last turn of Indianapolis is quite long and most of the cars are not able to accelerate through it with full throttle, let alone applying boost. I'd rather deploy most of the charge at the long curve between corner number 8 and number 9 and then use the rest up when entering the start-finish straight. We need at least four cars to complete the entire GT Open series. The Aston Martin Vulcan AMR Pro is specified for Vulcan Bomber Breakout of GT Open Special Series, and the Koenigse Jesco is specified for Jesco Hot Lap, and it's also allowed for the UK Open Championship. We still need a four-wheel drive cars for the four-wheel drive Master Class Series, and a Ferrari for Tifasi Ultra Race. The fastest four-wheel drive car in my test is Neo EP9 from the Electric Pack DLC, or Porsche 918 Spider from GT Open Showroom, if you don't have the Electric Pack DLC. The fastest Ferrari in my test is 488 GT3. All 78 cars are tested with the downforce set at 4.0 in the front and 10.0 in the rear for both pace setters. I tuned the brake balance of couple of cars to suit my taste. There is no need to tune the cars because SMS set the bars of these pace setters very low, all you need to do is to pick a faster car. 53 cars reached both highest objectives in my test. I'll be showing you most of them very briefly. Here we go. Number 53, Ford Fusion Stock Car is a front engine, rear wheel drive car from the GTB showroom, upgraded to PIRR 1040 is the lowest one among the 53 cars in my list if you care to know. Number 40, Nissan Skyline GTR is a front engine, four-wheel drive car from the GTC showroom. You can get this car from the Road E showroom and convert to a GTC race car. 
The acceleration performance scored 99.3 is the best among all. Number 37, Porsche Cayman GT4 is a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive car from the GTV showroom. It's the lowest value car among all 53 in my list. Number 25, Audi AI Race Concept is a mid-engine, four-wheel drive car from the Electric Pack DLC. It's got 869 horsepower output and weight 3,080 pounds, the power-to-weight ratio is only 0.282 horsepower per pound, is the worst in this class. Number 10, Koenig said Jesco is a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive car from the GT Open showroom. Its top speed performance scored 89.3 is the highest among all. The 1614 horsepower output is the most powerful one, and the power to weight ratio 0.541 horsepower per pound is the best as well. It reached staggering 246 miles per hour or 395 km per hour at Fuji Speedway, is the fastest top speed in my test. Although it has 9 speeds and the unique short gearing, the acceleration scored only 73.4, is not outstanding. However, it's a very interesting car to drive. Number 6, Volkswagen IDR is a mid-engine four-wheel drive car from the electric pack DLC. This electric car got the best handling and braking scores. The braking distance of this car is incredibly short. Although the 799 horsepower output is the worst among the 53 cars in my list, and the power to weight ratio 0.347 is terrible, the acceleration scored 88.2 is surprisingly high. The overall grip of this car is phenomenal, especially the awesome aerodynamics. It's the only car that can pass through the long curve, corner number 3 and number 4 at Fuji Speedway with full throttle. The top speed scored only 34.9 is the lowest in this class, and it reached only 165 miles per hour or 266 km per hour at Fuji Speedway in my test is the slowest among the 53 cars in my list. Number 3, Neo EP9 is a mid-engine, four-wheel drive car from the electric pack DLC. The 1,466 horsepower output of this car is the second best in this class, but the 3,621 pounds weight is the worst. The power to weight ratio 0.405 is not very impressive either. The performance readings are not really standing out, and it's not very easy to push this car to its limit consistently, but it resulted in the third place at both pace setters. It is the fastest electric car in GT Open class. It got 1 minute 12 seconds.723 average lap time at American Smooth. and 1 minute 24 seconds.845 at Fuji Speedway. That's 12.432 seconds ahead of the highest objectives in total. Number 2, Renault Sport RS01 is a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive car from the GT Open showroom, upgraded to PIRR 1292, is the highest among all. The braking performance scored 87.4 is the second best, and the handling 84.3 is the third in this class. It's got solid performance and resulted in the second place effortlessly. It got 1 minute 12 seconds.489 average lap time at American Smooth. and 1 minute 24 seconds.095 at Fuji Speedway. 
That's 13.416 seconds ahead of the highest objectives in total. Number 1, McLaren F1 GTR Longtail is a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive car from the GT Open showroom. It has the second best handling performance score, 85.9, combined with second best power to weight ratio, 0.538 horsepower per pound. This car is pure badass. Weight only 2,069 pounds, it's the lightest one among the 53 cars in my list. It's very agile, very responsive to inputs, very predictable. The mechanical grip and aerodynamics are exceptionally good. It is a must try you don't want to miss. It got 1 minute 11 seconds.110 average lap time at American Smooth. And 1 minute 21 seconds.976 at Fuji Speedway. That's 16.914 seconds ahead of the highest objectives in total. It's dominating both pace setters, no doubt the fastest car of the GT Open class. Please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.